some tools from home that are fantastic here. Um, GTC, General Technologies Corp, uh, I believe they're out of Canada. They, I had been using this guy. So this is the 100 for about a year, maybe two years now. I love this thing. I mean, this thing is fantastic. It's a smart tack but it measures secondary ignition voltage. So what's so great about this is I can go to a multi-cylinder bike and boom, 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 see if I have some differences. They don't give us specs and service manuals for what secondary sparks should be, but this thing, like I said, you're gonna see it here in a second, super, super fast. So I've been used to using this to try and determine or diagnose dead cylinders, weak spark. What made it great was to be able to measure it. So we got this guy, but the new one here, the 505 and here's the great thing about this as well too is we're talking about around 120 bucks for the 100 and this today you said you found on the internet for around 300 yeah. or so look at what this will do for 300 bucks and I'll compare these side by side here okay this one will do tack or peak secondary voltage you have to just switch it back and forth with the function here but the cat's meow, check this out. We could change our cycles, whether two stroke, four stroke, wasted spark. We can go into our mode and do uh, whatever we want to graph. We could choose that. And on our view, we could take and change whether we want it to be a single channel scope. We could change uh, if we want it to look like a chart. Uh, the comparison, I haven't figured this feature out yet, but my favorite go-to is just this guy. And once again, we said what was different was we see RPM and secondary voltage at the same time. It also records the min and max. It's got a cool hold feature too, to where let's say that I'm, we're gonna run out and put this on a truck here. Let's say I'm down inside somewhere and I can't you know, work very well to where I can see, I could tap that hold button, pull it out and look at it to what it was exactly at. like. Let's say you wanted to do a spark test at 3000 RPM. So you want to hold that throttle and do it. The min and max wouldn't help you. You'd need the hold for that 3000. Make sense? Um, this adapter I haven't had a chance to use yet. Like I said, it comes with multiple adapters. This is supposed to be where you can actually just go over a, a coil and uh, hover above the coil and make it work. I'm gonna go to the traditional one that we have here. And what we like about this guy here is that I can rotate this in position. This is really super flexible so that we can get a, a signal. Let's use it on a bike. So you, you wanna make sure that you don't go around the cap itself, okay? You wanna go around the, the wire, not insulated here. Go ahead and look at the tool. How cool is that? That we're getting secondary voltage right now. It's peak, but we're also getting RPM. Look at the, the gauge here to see how accurate that is. Pretty dang consistent. If I were to switch this to two cycle, you'll see that it'll be wrong. You can see it cut in half there. Go back. Here's where the speed is. Now I could go in here. Boom. There's wire number two. It's literally just that fast. That thing pretty stinking cool. Now, the understanding that I got is this was the older technology and that when they you know, made the new tool and came up with the most accurate data, I think it was the president of the company that I was working with on this, he just simply said, he says, this is the ultimate tool, this is the ultimate data, but they don't dismiss this because in the reality of it, we don't have a spec we're comparing in a manual. What we're using these fantastic tools for is to determine a problem, to be able to see electricity, to be able to see spark and to go, wait a second, this is a tool that you would literally take right to the machine and verify not only that you have spark, but how much spark you have. That would show you weak coils, bad plug wires, bad plug caps, just something wrong with the ignition system. I got the hood open on my truck. Let's run out there and uh, do these both on an auto. Keegan, you want to take a shot? Grab a plug wire with it? Let's go ahead. We need to clear the old data, too. Pull it out. You can read the max, okay? Have some fun here real quick. Let's, uh, let's go to view. Let's do waveform. Go ahead and go across there. Yep, go ahead. Let off. 
Let's try this. You can stay where you are. I want to see what the chart looks like. Go ahead and wrap it up. You see that moving in real time, and when it gets loaded, uh, it actually goes down. Let's do this again. Go ahead and stomp it. Stomp it, yep. As we're studying uh, ignition and electrical systems here, this is so cool to see what options we have. You know, inside most all your service manuals, you're literally just going to take a meter and you're going to be doing a continuity test to try and determine. But this allows us on a running vehicle, or at least a motor that can crank, you know, because the vehicle wouldn't have to run. We could just do cranking to see if we have spark we can actually get some real live data. This is kind of like dynoing your ignition system. Does that make sense? So I don't know about you guys, but I think this is ridiculously cool. I'm really happy for uh, GTC to reach out to us at howtowrench.com and uh, tell us about the new version of this. They saw some videos that we had done on the old one and said, hey, you gotta check out this new one. The accuracy of that tachometer in this thing was awesome too. Oh, you guys remember too, this has uh, rechargeable batteries in it. So that was a pretty cool feature, but to be able to see all that data at one time, way, way, way cool. So cool, lots of uses.